Hi everybody, welcome back to Visually Hidden Selects. I'm Peter O'Brien and today I'd like to talk to you about City Lights from 1931. This film was written, produced, directed by, and stars Charles Chaplin. This film is pretty significant because it was released in 1931, well into the era of talking pictures, but it was a silent film. He started producing the picture in 1927, shortly after he completed filming The Circus. So he started filming it as a silent film, and it took him about three years to finish the film. Because he owned his own studio, so that was his job. He would show up to work and he would film or he would develop ideas or he would practice or he would rehearse. And so the film kind of came together over that period of time. It wasn't like today where he sat down and he wrote out a script and he perfected the script and then he storyboarded the script and then he shot the script. He developed it the way he would a theater piece and his art was really in pantomime. So he would take situations and then try to find the humor in them and develop them over the course of time and develop them through rehearsals. And every now and then ideas would strike and then he would develop those ideas further and attempt filming them. But Charles Chaplin was reluctant to make that transition to talking pictures primarily because he felt that the appeal of his character remaining silent was a global appeal. The Tramp was universally regarded as a hero among people all over the planet, so he felt that assigning him a nationality or a language would be detrimental to the success of the character. It was much cheaper to simply insert a card into a silent film with the different languages where the film was playing rather than dub the entire movie at the time. There's a lot to enjoy about this film. Again, it wasn't written all at once. It was developed over time, but Chaplin did have some very clear through lines for the story. He had some very clear ideas for the characters throughout the story. And then it was just a matter of developing the, let's just call them set pieces. The main story of the film, it begins with a statue dedication ceremony and the tramp is sleeping on the lap of the statue. Again, just showcasing that he really is destitute, that he has no place to go, and that he is a part of the city. He moves throughout the city and has several little adventures, but the main story revolves around his relationship with a blind flower girl who mistakes him for a millionaire, and coincidentally, a parallel story of his relationship with an eccentric millionaire that only seems to recognize him when the millionaire is drunk. That just opens the door for all kinds of comedic interactions between the two of them because when the millionaire is sober, he has no recollection of the tramp whatsoever. And whenever he is drunk, it's like his long lost friend, his companion has come back to him. But the heart of the story is his relationship with the flower girl. He, of course, is a hopeless romantic and falls for her and does what he can to help her along the way in this big city. I love this film because it has all of the elements that make Chaplin great. It has great set pieces, it showcases great timing, there's a lot of technological advancements in here. I mean, he filmed all of his stuff at his studio in Los Angeles. You can go to Los Angeles and you can see his studio, it's still there. It looks like a row of uh, English townhouses and it is actually the current home of the Muppets. There is a statue of Kermit the Frog dressed up as Charlie Chaplin above the entrance to the studio. Just the fact that he stuck to his guns and made this movie as a silent film, it just showcases his dedication to his art, to his craft, and it really comes through. I mean, it doesn't miss a beat and it really delivers in what it sets out to do, which is to entertain, and maybe bring you some laughs and maybe even a tear. I think that's the goal of this specific film. Whenever I think of City Lights, the first scene that comes to mind is the boxing scene for a number of reasons. First, its place in the story, the motivation for the character to partake in that scene, and then the whole setup and execution of that sequence. The way the tramp finds himself brought into that scene as kind of a uh, co-conspirator and then suddenly the rug is pulled out from under him and he is left in that scene to fend for himself. It's just really good writing 
and then the execution of the scene and how he finds his way through it, it's very enjoyable and very entertaining. But there are so many great moments throughout the entire film. I mean, a lot of his antics with the millionaire are a lot of fun. I mean, there's one car scene where they're driving through the city after an all-nighter. Even when they meet down by the water is a very memorable scene and sequence. From his first appearance in short films in like 1914, up through his final appearance in modern times, the Tramp was one of the most consistent characters in cinematic history. I would dare say the most consistent cinematic character. More so than James Bond, that's for sure. <laughs> I first saw this film, I had to track it down on DVD. It instantly made an impression on me, especially when it got to the, uh, the final moments. Well, Charlie Chaplin is one of the really early pioneers of, I guess you could say, independent filmmaking. I mean, he started his own studio. He took the money he earned working for other people and started making his own films and retaining control of his films. So it's not like he ever really had to deal with a studio or outside interference. What you see on the screen is what he intended and what he wanted to share. So it's a very pure and sincere art form. That's kind of something that I've taken with me into the realm of independent filmmaking. That's one of the more beautiful things about independent filmmaking is that you do it not necessarily on your own, but you do it the way you want. Like you actually, it is actually an art form. It's not a product that is churned out to make money or to lose money in a lot of cases. And it relies heavily on the creator's creative vision. And since he was the writer, producer, director, star, and subsequently the composer of his films, you really get a sense of what he wanted you to experience. And the fact that he made so many films that have been universally praised and enjoyed speaks volumes to the caliber of his talent. If you only ever watch one silent film, this is the one to watch. I mean, you would be doing yourself a great disservice if you only ever watched one, and you would also be doing yourself a great service if you only ever watched this one. However, if you're only gonna watch one, I highly recommend this one. It is the pinnacle of the art form as documented in its day. A lot of the silent film stars, especially the big ones, they were in control and they were very creative and they took a lot of chances that other people just built on. I mean, if you really are serious about film and the process of filmmaking, it's always best to start at the beginning and Charlie Chaplin was right there at the beginning. And so again, this film is a culmination of everything that he had worked towards over the course of a 22 year career. I mean, that's, that's one of the really cool things about silent films is that even though they're silent, they say a lot of things. So that about does it for City Lights. Again, I highly recommend this film and I don't think you'll be disappointed. So until next time, we'll see ya.